So here we have the finite difference method for the Laplace e equation. We're ready to introduce the finite, finite difference method. So we're just going to do it on this example, and then we can generalize uh, to, to other situations. But uh, I've just rewritten here the, the Laplace equation, the second partial of, uh, of t with respect to x, and the second partial of t uh, with respect to y. Uh, and so just as we did with our ordinary differential equations, what we do is we substitute in uh, the derivatives uh, for uh, uh, for for x and for y, and how we do that is just figure 23.3, the the chart in in the book that we did when we did the section on derivatives uh, gives the derivatives that we can uh, that we can uh, substitute and uh, specifically just just putting them in terms of these variables it would be and so this is the center difference method uh, the second partial of t uh, with respect to x is going to be uh, t i plus 1 j so I'm just using the the i j indices to denote this minus 2 that's a 2 not a z 2 uh, I, I cross my z's anyway, so you can always tell the difference. T i j plus T i minus 1 j all over delta x squared and the, the second partial of T with respect to y it's going to be similar. That'll be T I J plus one minus two T I J plus T I J minus one all over delta Y squared. All right, so that's great. And Let's make a few additional assumptions. So let's say, uh, and we can just substitute these these right in. Uh, but when we do that, you, I mean, you can see what's going to happen. But what if we say let delta x? So let delta x, and we're going to have to do this. I mean, you can't just pretend that it's true. It's got to be true for your for your problem. But if we sell, um, if we set our grid sizes to be the same, let delta x equal delta y then we're going to have a common delta on the bottom so uh, that'll be nice um, and then what we get when we simplify that out is that we have t i plus one j plus t i minus one j plus t i j plus 1 plus t i j minus 1 plus t i minus or plus t let's see 1 2 3 4 oh okay yeah plus so that's it plus 4 t i j equals 0 and the 4 comes from uh, we had the 2 here, 2 here. That should be a minus, shouldn't it? Yes, it is a minus. So that should be a minus for tij equals 0. Yeah, so we get the minus 2 here, the minus 2 here, uh, and the minus, and, and they're both the same sign. So, okay, so this is this is the equation that we get. This is the Laplacian uh, difference equation, and uh, so the next thing we have to do is is figure out what our boundary condition is and given our boundary condition we can just write out a system of equations we're just going to write this out for as many uh, as many uh, uh, points as we have on our grid so uh, let's lay out a grid and I'll show you an example all right so here's the drawing that goes along with it so uh, this is just um, uh, an example so we've laid out a uh, 
a grid and I, I've, I've actually included the edges here as well. I, I've put some of the, these are just the coordinates, 0, 0, 1, 0, 2, 0, 3, 0, and then the interior coordinates are really the ones we care about, 1, 1, 2, 1, 3, 1, 1, 2, 2, 2, 3, 2, 1, 3, 2, 3, 3, 3. Those are the ones we're solving for. We already have all of the exterior edges, uh, assuming that, that the um, that the values are given on all the edges, uh, we have that those boundary conditions, uh, and uh, then we can write out. So this is just a general form. We can write out one equation uh, for each single one of these boundary conditions. So let me just start by saying, um, so we can say t, and and so let's write it out for the one one element. So t i plus one. So that'd be one plus one. So two one plus uh, t uh, i minus 1 j, so that'll be uh, 0, oh, it's a big 0, uh, 0, 1 plus t i j plus 1, so that'll be um, 1, 2 plus t um, i, that's 1 j minus 1, 0, 1, 0, uh, plus t, oh no, we already did that one, yeah. So that's going to be minus, minus, um, uh, let me erase all that, minus 4 t, um, 1, 1, okay. And that is set equal to uh, to zero, but there's a little bit of information that we know here, right? We know this value, t zero one, and we know t one zero, right? Um, t zero one. Um, let's see. T uh, let's see. Uh, zero one. T zero one. That's seventy five. Seventy five, and t one zero. So that's one. Uh, zero, so that's zero. So we can just plug that in. So then we have t two one plus t one two minus four t one one equals. We just bring the seventy five to the other side. Um, minus seventy five. So that's the first equation, uh, and we could just keep writing this out for all the other equations. Every time we have a boundary condition uh, in, in the equation, whether it's this one or this point or this point, every time we're going to have one of these boundaries at least in there, and sometimes two of the boundaries are going to be in there or more, um, it'll simplify down because we have the values at all the boundary points. And so uh, what's going to happen is we're going to have uh, a system of of nine equations uh, with nine unknowns and we just have to solve this system simultaneously again similar to how we did with the ordinary differential equations so we can solve this system of equations simultaneously now uh, we're, we have the same situation as we had before um, and we have a very very sparse matrix now the method that they like to use uh, I'm gonna write it down so that's called the Leibman method L I E B M A N, the Leibman method, Leibman method, uh, which is an efficient way of of solving this system, um, and it's actually just Gauss Seidel. Seidel. So we've already seen the Gauss-Seidel method of, of solving a system of equations. You just you uh, you uh, put in a, the one value, and then you solve the next equation, and then you solve the so you just guess the initial values, and then you solve the next equation, you solve the next equation, solve the next one, solve the next one, solve the next one, and then you just uh, start over. So you iterate a little bit, and then uh, that's how you come up with your solution. So that's the Gauss-Seidel method or the Leibniz method. I mean, you could also invert the matrix or whatever other method you want, but that tends to be inefficient. And so numerically, uh, it's better to use uh, to use an iterative approach uh, to solving 
uh, to solving this system of equations. And the other thing is, is just as we talked about, so we talked about with Gauss-Seidel method of using relaxation, relaxation, and you can do, use over relaxation, excuse me, you can use over relaxation or under relaxation. Uh, a lot of times we're going to use over uh, over relaxation to um, in this Gauss-Seidel uh, method to, to s speed up our convergence. The last thing that I wanted to, to point out here is you need to remember that because we're using an iterative method to solve this to, to solve this matrix equation to, to solve these simultaneous system of equations uh, we also need to uh, meet a stopping criterion so we do the same thing uh, the same thing as we had done before where we say our absolute value of e i j uh, that's e sub we could call it e sub a i j is equal to the absolute value of t new minus t old all over t uh, new and this is i j i j i j right it's the i j element and so as soon as this this condition we could say times one hundred percent is met then we 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 know that we can stop it but but again this is nothing new it's just the same thing that we learned before when we had to do the gauss seidel method it's just coming back to haunt us